I welcome you to this session of ISO 9001-2015 and today we are going to discuss clause number 8.3.2 Design and Development Planning. So as, you, as usual, first of all I will read out the requirement to you as given in the standard. 8.3.2 Design and Development Planning In determining the stages and controls for design and development, the organization shall consider a. the nature, duration and complexity of design and development activities, b. the required process stages including applicable design and development reviews, c. the required design and development verification and validation activities, d. the responsibilities and authorities involved in the design and development process, e. internal and external resources needed needs for the design and development of products and services, f. the need to control interfaces between persons involved in the design and development process, g. the need for involvement of customers and users in the design and development process and uh, H the requirements for subsequent provision of products and services, I the level of controls expected for the design and development process by customers and other relevant interested parties and J the documented information needed to demonstrate that the design and development requirements have been met. So this is the total requirement as given in the standard and, I'll, and now let us discuss out in detail. Now in determining out the stages of planning, see we are supposed to prepare a plan and there are going to be various stages in the planning. So in determining the stages and control for design and development, the organization has to consider various aspects. And the very first, according to this standard is, the nature, duration, complexity of design and development activities. What is the nature of design and development that we are going to carry out? Is it the design and development of a uh, housing complex? or it, is it the design of uh, a hospital or is it the design of a machine tool or is it the design of aircraft or a motor car. So it all depends in, in what kind of design activity we are getting involved, what for the design is uh, related to. So that is the very first thing, the nature, the duration and complexity. The more complex is the product, the more complex will be the design process and there the number of interfaces will be more. So the nature, duration and complexity of design and development activities, they have to be kept in mind while preparing the planning for design and development. And for each kind of design, uh, it will depend on whether it is for a motor car or it is for an aircraft or a machine tool or a simple uh, some kind of clothing or utility equipment or whatever it is. So it will depend on the nature of the product for which the design is to be carried out. How complex is the product? Accordingly, the design stages are also going to be uh, more intricate and there are, there are going to be more interfaces. So the uh, nature and duration and complexity of the design has to be kept in mind while uh, preparing a planning document for carrying out the design work. Now B is the required process stages including applicable design and development reviews. What are going to be various process stages? Normally, the very first stage is the planning. The planning, how, what interfaces are going to be there, who are the people going to be 
authorized and um, uh, what kind of inputs they will receive and from where so uh, various things are uh, various aspects are there in the design and they have to be taken care so the required process stages have got to be spelled out in the planning very clearly including the applicable design and development uh, reviews the design and development has to be done at various stages and after each and every stage there has got to be a review and this review has got to be recorded and the people who will carry out the review have got to be competent they should know what kind of design is there and uh, normally it is the head of the team who carries out the review the design is done by the team members and finally the review is done by the head of the team and uh, he considers various interfaces which were there and various reviews carried out by them and final review is done by the controlling authority so that is how the planning is uh, laid out the planning is made accordingly and next point is the required design and development verification and validation activities so verification and validation activities have got to be carried out after several design reviews there may be a verification activity verification activity means whether the design has been carried out as planned or not and the reviews have been done as planned or not so we are supposed to be verifying the design process so verification activity has to be done and then once the design is over then all the design reviews are complete and all verifications are complete and the design is ready then in the practical situation how that product is going to behave so product uh, verification in the field has to be carried out on the final product so that is known as validation so what at what stages that uh, design and development validation will take place and whether validation it is at all feasible or not and whether some kind of a software has been developed for uh, validation of the design or not so all these aspects have to be considered and they are supposed to be put in the planning now we go to the next one d the responsibilities and authorities involved in the design and development of the process so we have to uh, clearly spell out which, which are the uh, who are the people who are going to be responsible who are going to be involved in the design and development process and uh, what are going to be their roles and responsibilities so this has to be responsibilities have to be very clearly spelled out in the plan itself okay now we go to the next one e internal and external resources needs for the design and development of product and services there can be various inputs which our design own design team cannot carry cannot uh, carry out those activities so we have to take help from outside for example if the uh, land is to be surveyed then the survey team can, could be from outside so if the soil testing is to be done then the soil testing team has to be from outside if any other kind of testing has to be done some material testing then the laboratories has to be identified suitably and they they must be part of the planning so we should be clear where all the testing has to be done so the internal and external resources they need to be clearly identified for the design and development of the product and services and these should become the part of part of the design activity part of the plan itself now next is the need to control interfaces between persons involved in design and development process now there could be depending on the complexity of the product there could be various interfaces and those interfaces they need to be controlled whether regular interaction is there between them or not 
and whether the activity is progressing as planned or not. So this uh, kind of review has also to be carried out whether the plan is being followed or not, whether the design activity is going ahead according to the plan or not. So accordingly, uh, the need to control the interfaces, the interfaces has to have to be controlled and the persons involved in design and development process, they need to be very clear about it as to how the interfaces are going to work. Now, next one is the need for involvement of customers and users in the design and development process. This is the next requirement. Now, there can be certain designs uh, where, for example, the design of a specialty hospital, uh, the, the owners or the users of that design, they may like to be involved as the design progresses, they may like to see how the design is happening, whether everything is taken care of or not. So the need for involvement of uh, the uh, involvement of customers and users in the design and development process, that has to be evolved and it must become plan it must become part of the planning itself planning itself should be very clearly showing what uh, you know interfaces are there and at what stages the meetings will take place with the customer or uh, the users of the design and development process if they are supposed to be involved in the design and development activity next is requirement for subsequent provision of products and services now finally it is the organization which is going to be responsible for uh, providing the product or the service to the customer. So the requirement for provision of product has or uh, services that has to be kept very much in mind while carrying out the planning. And we have to ensure that all regulatory requirements, all customer requirements, all requirements stated by the organization and any other requirement needed for the product that is taken care at the planning stage itself that uh, that particular aspect is to be considered and it will be taken care of while designing okay next is level of control expected for the design and development process by the customers and relevant interested parties so uh, this has to be this has to come out very clearly in the plan what at what level uh, there will be there will be interaction between the customer or the user and at at what intervals the at what stages the meetings will be held and how they will be interacting how inputs from them will be taken and passed on to the uh, the designers so that has to be part of the planning itself so the planning has got to be very detailed the level of control expected for the design and development process by the customers and other relevant interested parties has got to be spelled out very clearly. And the last point is J, the documented information needed to demonstrate that the design and development requirements have been met. So the, there has to be appropriate records for everything including the planning. So the planning has got to be documented. It must be recorded properly. And uh, the planning document should be available so that it can be shared uh, with the customers or whosoever is the pertinent authority or who is supposed to be involved in the design. We can share the planning with them also. And plus, the, whosoever is involved in the planning, the design plan must be available with each one of them. So a proper record of the design and development planning has got to be maintained. So that is all in this requirement and we have discussed it point by point and I hope you have understood the requirement. If there is anything which is not clear to you, please give your comment below this video and I will make it clear to you. So I think that's all about this requirement. And I am sure you have subscribed to my channel 
and also press the bell icon so that the next video as and when I load, the information will reach you well in time. And if you like my videos, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up and also share my video videos with your friends and colleagues. I'll feel very happy if you do so. And thank you very much for watching my videos and we meet again on next Sunday. Bye.